Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design, specifically looking at the digital I.O. peripheral of the MSP430. In this video, we're going to look at the definitions for the configuration register names that are located within the MSP430 header file. Okay, so the peripherals are memory mapped, meaning that uh, port one out is a register that has a unique address and all the configuration registers associated with port one have a unique address. Same thing with port two. <clears throat> it turns out there's hundreds, if not thousands of configuration register addresses that are used to control and operate all the peripherals on this microcontroller. There, there is no way that you could ever memorize all these addresses. And it's also extremely tedious to try to look up the absolute addresses of all these. So when you create a project, the, the manufacturers or the designers of the of CCS and the microcontroller, they basically created this header file for you. <clears throat> and the main uh, top level is msp430.h. And what we do is whenever you use the peripherals, you really never use their hard-coded address. What you do is you use the labels. <clears throat> they're not labels. They're de definitions, name definitions, that are in the, uh, the header file. So instead of coding with like binary, they even have uh, definitions for like things like bit zero and bit one. Uh, so instead of like trying to set bit zero in this port one data direction register and putting its absolute address here, like 202 or whatever it is, you would code like this. <clears throat> you would have something that's uh, P1 DIR and then you would use bit zero. So this starts making your code very readable. What's even really cool about it is that the definitions in this header file, they're defined as C pound defines meaning that the same uh, names that we use in assembly are going to be identical to what we use when we move into C. So when you, as you get used to using these, it's very transferable. Okay, so let's take a look at, at where these things are and how I want to use them. First of all, when you go out and start looking at register names, uh, you come back to this MSP430FR family user's guide. So this is the monster, the 676-pager. And you come down over here and you're in your digital IO section, come down to digital IO registers <clears throat> and you see this huge table of registers. So P1 IV, P1 IV, uh, <clears throat> P2 IV, P3 IV, all these different uh, registers are used to configure these, you know, the, the ports and they have names. And if you go look at them, uh, let's look at like uh, PX out, each one of these has a unique name and what they did with the header file is they tried to make the spelling of the definitions, the name definitions, the same as, as the data sheet. I will tell you, they're not all exactly the same, so you got to get used to coming in here and seeing what the rough name is. <laughs> and then you go in and you look at the, the header file and you figure out what the actual name is that you use in your program. But it, this is where you start. You start with these registered names in here and then you go into, uh, <clears throat> into the header file. So now let's look at the header file. So let me let me bring up a code composer and let's go look at an old project. So if I come here, <clears throat> I remember our, one of our first programs was Blinky. When I open this, notice that I have this uh, definition of the MSP430. <clears throat> so that's the device header file. If you wonder where that thing is, you come over here and within each project, you're going to have a folder that's called uh, includes and you're going to see some stuff in here. And it's this first CCS base MSP430 include, and this folder is going to have these header files. And now when you open this, take a deep breath. <clears throat> there is hundreds and hundreds of files in here, and they are for each and every MCU MSP430 variation that they have. Okay, And not, don't ask me why every single project has all these files. Uh, it's just how it is. And this is a, a large part of why the files are why these projects can actually get big in terms of size on your disk. But I'm going to scroll down here <clears throat> and I finally get down here and I see the MSP430 header file and I want to open this up and see what it is. If you look at this, it actually doesn't have any information in it other than a big, a big if else statement <clears throat> that says if a particular variable is set up, use this specific header file. 
And, and if you scroll down there, it has all of these different header files that it could potentially point to. And so this is actually not where you get anything interesting. <clears throat> what happens is that when you start a project, we selected the actual MCU we wanted to use. You know, we had to make sure it was MSP430 FR2355. That set a variable <clears throat> in the project that then this header file uses to choose which of these specific header files it's going to use. So I know that we're using the MSP430 FR2355. So let's scroll down and try to find it. So I'm going to scroll down and, and you just, it's like overwhelming how many of these there are. <clears throat> and this just shows you kind of like how many part numbers there are for the MSP430. And so I finally am down into the FR standing for FRAM and I'm starting to see 2355 and I see two things. So the first thing I'm seeing is a, is a header file, and then I also see a command file. If you open the header file, it actually gives you a thing that says, <clears throat> this thing's so big, do you, do you even want to open it? Do you want to set define it a certain way or format it a certain way? If I look in here, there is some information in here that is handy, okay? So for example, they define the status register bits. <clears throat> so if you use C or Z or N or V, it will actually substitute in these hex codes. And it's got all these different little name definitions for you to use, and it's actually and it's awesome, <clears throat> okay? But when you scroll down more, you start seeing that a lot of this is, uh, that yeah, this is this has a lot of stuff in it. Um, and yeah, and you can use any of these, they're great. <laughs> but I will tell you, if you go into the CMD, it provides a format that is a lot easier to read. So when you come in down in here, this is gonna be the linker command file for definitions in the header file. And this one actually is a, is way easier to read because it breaks it up with comments in terms of the peripheral. So if I come down here, you've got ADC. These are all associated with the analog to digital converter. Let's scroll down and look at the digital IO. So I'm looking for DIO, that's just what they call it. And here we are. Here is where you start seeing these names uh, and these, basically these, uh, definitions that will act as substitutions when you code. And if you start scrolling down, it's like, okay, PA, we remember PA was in concatenation of port one and two. Here's now where we're at uh, P1. <clears throat> so if I look at this, you can start seeing stuff that you might recognize. So I'm like P1 IV, I'm not using that register. What about that P1 uh, DIR thing? So if I get down here, oh, here we go. Here's P1 in, P1 out. <clears throat> And it turns out P1 in is the first address in the peripheral range of memory. It's at 200. And you see down here, it's like, here's P1 out. It's at 202. Well, that's okay. And then you got, here's P1 resistor, pull up, pull down, enable. Oh, that's nice too. And where's P1 DIR? Uh, let's see, where's that one? P1 DIR. So it's in here also, P1 DIR. And it's at an address. And so this is, these are the absolute addresses of what this label is uh, going to contain. Okay, so that's where you find this information. Now, when you use these, if you come down and look at some of the stuff in here from our prior code, notice that I'm using these uh, substitutions in here. Think about it like this. <clears throat> you are using uh, a label, okay? <clears throat> and so we need... This is basically symbolic addressing. And so what we have to do is we have to put a ampersand before all these so that it treats this as uh, an address of where you're gonna alter this. So every time you use these, <clears throat> make sure to put the ampersand. But you can start to see your code becoming a little bit more readable, right? So you know you see like ampersand P1DIR, that's the direction register for port one. And you could, you know, I have, I use this hard coded number right here, I could have used of a definition called bit zero. So you can start using all those names that are defined in these header files and to make your code very readable. And it's gonna be great as we do this because there's too many configuration registers to even keep track of the names or addresses. And so we start coding our assembly looking more like uh, something that's readable and that transcends over into C once we start doing it. Okay, that is it. Uh, as always, remember to support my channel by subscribing so I can continue to bring you more videos. See ya.